Today I've got a nice number theory problem that comes from the 2018 CMICM. And so this is a math contest given by the Carnegie Mellon University, which is in the United States. So our goal is to find all integers n such that n minus 1 times 2 to the n plus 1 is a perfect square. And so generally when we're trying to do things like this, there's either an obvious infinite family of solutions or there are only a few small solutions. And generally that case when there's only a few small solutions comes about much more commonly than the infinite family of solutions. So that being said, we'll check some small values of n to see if we can get some solutions and then prove that there are no solutions after that. Okay, so let's maybe first start with n equals zero and see what we get for that. So if we have n equals zero, then we'll have zero minus one is negative one times two to the zero plus one, but that's equals to zero, which is zero squared. Then let's move to n equals one. Well, n equals one is zero, so we get zero plus one, which is one, but that's clearly one squared. So that works out as well. Then, now let's look at n equals two. So n equals two, we get two minus one, which is one. Two squared plus one, so two squared plus one is five. So that does not give us a solution. So just to reiterate, we do have a solution here and here. So these two numbers are good, but this number right here, n equals two, is not good. I'll let you check n equals three on your own, but you will not get a solution in that case. So let's go to n equals four. So in that case, we get four minus one, which is three, times two to the four, which is 16, plus one. That gives us the number 49, which is clearly equal to seven squared. So we've got another solution in this case when n equals four. And then it turns out there, there are no solutions after that, which we'll get to, show, get to showing eventually. But before we do that, let's notice that we've got all integers here, not all positive integers or all non-negative integers. So that means we need to work backwards as well. So let's look at the case when n equals minus one. So that's gonna give us negative two times two to the minus one plus one. Two to the minus one is a half times negative two is negative one plus one equals zero. So we get this is zero as well, but zero is clearly zero squared. So that n equals negative one case also gives us a solution. So, so far we've got four solutions. Now what we'd like to prove is that there are no more solutions up that way. So for n equals negative two, negative three, so on and so forth. So let's maybe do that. So first let's suppose that n is less than or equal to negative two. So the issue we wanna build will be that this n minus one times two to the n is not an integer. So let's point that out here. We want to show that n minus one times two to the n is not an integer. Okay, again, that's built off of this kind of assumption that n is less than or equal to negative two. But next up, let's note that that's equivalent to showing that one minus n is less than two to the minus n. And that puts everything kind of into positive numbers here. So I can put zero over here on this side. So notice if one minus n is less than two to the n, then you can think about this as being like a fraction of negative one minus n over two to the minus n. But if that numerator is smaller than the denominator, then that thing is most definitely not an integer. I think I said not an integer, but I forgot to put my little cross there. Okay, but it's a little bit tricky to deal with these minus signs everywhere. So let's make a change of variables. So let's set m equal to negative n. And then that means that m is bigger than or equal to two. And what we'd like to show 
is now that m minus one is less than two to the m. But now it's looking like something pretty familiar. We've got like a polynomial on the left-hand side and an exponential on the right-hand side. Obviously, the exponential will always win out. So what we will show instead, so we will show is that m is less than two to the m for all m bigger than or equal to two. Then m minus one is clearly to the left of that. And we can do that by induction or by like a bunch of other ways if you want to. So maybe we could do that by induction. So our base case, that'll be like the m equals two case in this case. And notice that two is most definitely less than two to the two because that's equal to four. And then we can make an induction hypothesis. Let's say we suppose for some k bigger than or equal to two, we know k is less than two to the k. Okay, but then note that k plus one is less than two times k, which is less than two times two to the k, which is equal to two to the k plus one, which is exactly what we needed to do to finish this thing off. Okay, so now let's work back up to the top. So we've just proven this inequality, and that inequality implies this inequality right here, but then via the change of variables, m is equal to minus n, that establishes this inequality, which means that this guy right here is not an integer, but if that guy right there is not an integer, then we cannot talk about this object as being a perfect square. Okay, so that clears up everything for the cases when n is less than or equal to negative 2. Now we'll work on the cases when n is bigger than or equal to 5. So all we're left to show is that there are no more solutions when n is bigger than or equal to 5, and that means these four solutions over here are the only ones that we have. Okay, so let's suppose that n is bigger than or equal to 5 and we have some integer, which I'll call k. We can actually take it to be a natural number, such that our expression is equal to k squared. So we have n minus one times two to the n plus one is equal to k squared. Okay. But now let's note that the left-hand side is most definitely an odd number. That's because this bit is even, then we're adding one. So that means that k is an odd number. But since k is an odd number, we can write it as two times m plus one, which means this is really two times m plus one quantity squared, which gives us four m squared plus four m plus one. Now we can start to simplify a little bit. Notice that we can subtract one from both sides of this. And then we can also factor a 4m out. That leaves us with 4m times m plus one. Then we can divide both sides by four, leaving us with the equation n minus one times two to the n minus two equals m times m plus one. Okay, so that's starting to shape up quite nicely. Now let's note that the left-hand side is still even. We know that this left-hand side is most definitely still even because we know that n is bigger than or equal to five, so that the, this exponent here is bigger than or equal to three. Another thing that we know is that these numbers right here, m and m plus one, have so-called opposite parity. So when I say they have opposite parity, that means one of them is even and one of them is odd. And so now we'll just like work through both cases. What if the case is m is even, or what if the case is m plus one is even? So let's take that first case first. So case number one, m is even, okay. So since m is even and m plus one is odd, well, let's maybe put that down, m plus one odd, that means that m gobbles up all of the powers of two here. Because if it didn't gobble up all of the powers of two, then m plus one would also be even, which is a clear contradiction. 
So that means we can write m as 2 to the n minus 2 times x. Okay, and then from there we can write m plus 1 as 2 to the n minus 2 times x plus 1 because it's clearly just equal to m plus 1. Okay, now where does that leave our equation? We have n minus 1 times 2 to the n minus 2 is equal to, let's see, we have 4 to the n minus 2 times x squared plus 2 to the n minus 2 times x. So that's just from multiplying this thing through given those values of m and m plus 1. But now we're going to work towards another size contradiction. So let's note that this is most definitely bigger than 4 to the n minus 2. And that's because x is bigger than or equal to 1 here. So we can get rid of this guy right here and then just maybe like get rid of the x term, keeping in mind that multiplying by x squared will give us something larger. Now we'll take what's left over, which is this inequality right here, and divide both sides by 2 to the n minus 2, leaving us with n minus 1 is strictly bigger than 2 to the n minus 2. But we could prove maybe a version of what we just did for that last case, that negative case, to show that 2 to the n minus 2 is bigger than n minus 1 for all n bigger than or equal to 5. So I won't do that here because that's essentially the exact same proof that we did for that previous case. So that brings us to a contradiction. So now let's move on to the second case where we have these parities switched. Now we're ready to finish this thing off with the case where m plus 1 is even and m is odd. That gives us the same type of decomposition as we had before. We know that m plus 1 has to gobble up all of the powers of 2. So we have m plus 1 is equal to 2 to the n minus 2 times an integer x, which means m is equal to 2 to the n minus 2 times that integer x minus 1. Okay, but now plugging that into this equation right here gives us n minus 1 times 2 to the n minus 2 equals, let's see, we'll have 4 to the n minus 2 times x squared minus 2 to the n minus 2 times x. So something that looks like that. Now from here, we'll divide both sides by 2 to the n minus 2. And that'll leave us with n minus 1 equals 2 to the n minus 2 times x squared minus x. But now, since x is a natural number, we know that this thing is bigger than 2 to the n minus 2 times x squared minus x squared. We just replaced x with x squared, um, creating something smaller since we're subtracting it. Now we can factor an x squared out and notice that that gives us 2 to the n minus 2 minus 1 times x squared. But now that itself is bigger than 2 to the n minus 2 minus 1, again because x is bigger than or equal to 1. Okay, so now let's see what we have here. We have n minus 1 is bigger than 2 to the n minus 2 minus 1, which tells us that n is bigger than 2 to the n minus 2, which means that n is bigger than 2 to the n minus 2, which again will give us the same sort of inequality type of contradiction as we had before because n is less than 2 to the n minus 2 for all n bigger than or equal to 5. Again, you can check that just as we did for those other cases. Okay, so that means in this case, we don't get any new solutions either. So putting that all together, that means we have all four of our solutions over there. And that's a good place to stop.